What's good, y'all? Back again. Uh, if it's your first time visiting the channel, I'm Travis Cooper, the creator of Amazon Made Easy. Um, the blueprint, the program that gives you the blueprint to making multiple six figures on Amazon. I've been on Amazon since 20, 2010, 2010. So we've done millions of dollars through the grace of God on Amazon. But enough about me. Let's get into the video. So another um, frequently asked questions. Question is, how do I list my products on Amazon, right? So I'm going to give you guys, I made a short um, keynote or PowerPoint presentation just to give you guys a simple step-by-step -step on how you too can list your products on Amazon. All right, let's get into it. All right. So the first thing you want to do, of course, assuming that you already have your Amazon sellers account. OK, once you sign into Seller Central, right, it's going to take you to this page. And I took some screenshots from Google, um, but this is more of the old setup. But over here to the top left hand corner over here, hopefully you guys can see my mouse moving. Um, if you can't just drop it in the comments if you're watching live. Uh, but it's like a hamburger menu. And I call it a hamburger menu because it has three horizontal bars. You're going to click that and you should see a tab called inventory right on the old setup. These tabs are across the top, but on the updated version of the uh, the app or the software seller central is uh, you will see that hamburger menu on the left hand side of your whether you're on your cell phone or you're on your laptop or desktop. Once you click the inventory, you're going to scroll to where it says add product, right? You don't want to go to any other thing. Make sure you select add product. It's probably, it may be a few extra options up here, but make sure everything, um, the options should still be the same. Add a product, okay? Once you click on add a product, it should take you to this page, right? So this first page, this, um, flow chart that I'm showing you, this is if you're listing a product that's already in Amazon's catalog. Now, before this video is over, I'm going to also show you how to create a listing. That's for when um, you're listing something that's not currently on Amazon. Nine times out of 10, um, new sellers are listing something that's already on Amazon. So when you get to this page, I need you to... And I'm, I'm going to make myself big again. Let's say, for example, if you were selling this notebook here, you guys see it has a UPC and UPC stands for universal product code. If you got uh, you, if you're in the media and you have books, you have a ISBN. What does ISBN number or um, what does that acronym stand for? It's international standard book number right and they use these codes these barcodes or um those numbers to identify those specific products okay so you're going to use that uh oh let me see if i can hold on okay there we go all right so you're going to put in that code right here okay and then you will press search, this little uh, magnifying glass or this little search thing like you a detective. Once you do that, it should take you to this page, okay? All right, they're going to find that product that you put in that UPC or your ISBN number, um, and it's going to show a picture of it, okay? Make sure it's the same. If you guys can see here, that UPC, that EAN, that ISBN, what I was talking about, Make sure that those numbers match. You don't want to make the mistake and list a product that you think you do have under a different listing, right? So make sure it's, um, this is the exact product because if you don't, um, you can run into a lot of problems. So make sure it's exact. It's the same. Make sure the title and the pictures match up. All right, from there. I'm going to add this into it, too. Some of the times it may say on the right, you see that red uh, square. It may say you need approval before listing this item. Now, if it says that, don't panic. Nine times out of 10, 
if it's in the media category, all you have to do is go in, request approval. Don't not purchase the item or you just, you know, give up and say, well, it needed approval. I can't sell this one. Go ahead and request approval because more times than not, Amazon to go ahead and give you automatic approval, right? They'll let you get what we call ungated. You can automatically be ungated. Give it a couple minutes, especially if you do it on your laptop. It will allow you to go in and go ahead and list that product. So don't get scared when it says this specific product requires you to um, request approval. Okay, it's cool. Just go ahead and do that. Wait a, a minute or two for it to let you through and then boom. Click sell products. So you will then see this screen. You can list it in new. It's going to show the other ca categories like new, use, or collectible. Okay. So this is the next screen you will get to. Okay. And I'm speaking of, we're not using, we're doing it the freeway. So we're not using any books, listing software. I do use ScanLister, but we're talking, this is more for the beginners. People that's trying to get up and running for completely free. Now, do I advise that you eventually invest into your company, into your business to run more efficiently with these with this software? Absolutely. But we're just talking about the basics. What if I don't have it? What can I do to get started today? This is how I got started in 2010. OK, so once you identify your condition, you're going to select um, the button of sell this product. And it should take you to this page. OK, all right. Now, this page, you're going to put in your SKU. What is a SKU? It's SKU is the acronym that stands for Stock Keeping Unit, right? And that is for you, right? Especially if you're merchant fulfilled or if you just want to put in some data, like where you purchase your uh, product from, the date that you purchased it from. And if you want to put in your buy, buy cost there, you can. Okay. So that information, again, the customer does not see your SKU is for you, for your organization, for your bookkeeping, whatever you need to do. Okay. Then the tab up under standard price. We all know what that is. You're going to put in the price that you want to sell it for. Um, under that, um, which they don't have here, Amazon now shows a listing price. What is a listing price? A listing price is like the retail price of that item. So some of the times, Let's say, for example, um, uh, a, a particular item went went um, out of stock, right? So let, let's talk in terms of books. So let's say we picked up a book that is, it retailed for $29.99, but it's out of print. What does out of print mean? They're no longer, no longer publishing the book. Life as an entrepreneur, I got you. Yep, I got you. Um, once I break down this slide, yes, sir, I'm going to answer this question. And for the guy, people that can't see whether you're watching live on the replay, this is his question. What is the repricer? What software? I sure will get to that. All right. So um, what was I saying, guys? What was OK? Right under the standard price is what you call the listing price. And that is like a um, a retail price. So let's say, for example, that. I want to list a particular product, okay? That that book, we're going to talk in terms of book. That book is currently not being printed. It's out of print. So what Amazon will ask for, and this is what I call a hiccup in Amazon sometimes. They want to know the retail uh, price of when the manufacturer dropped it, right, for that particular product. Now, again, it's 2023. Let's just say the last time that book was actually being printed, it was in, let's just say it was in 1995. So now that particular book or product has transitioned into being a collectible now. Now, Amazon, they, they do have a lot of technology, but some of the stuff is a little buggy. So you're going to put in the $29.99 for the listing. I that's what they want you to do. Let me let me uh rewind it back. They want you to put in the $29.99 for the listing price, and then they want you to put in your as the standard price 
what you want to sell it for. Now, what is the problem with this? Travis, why are you talking about this? And why is that relevant to us learning? Because I advise you to put in a higher price for the listing price, right? So let's just say you want to sell that particular product for, I don't know, $60, $70. It's a collectible now. When it first came out, it was 30. It'll probably be even higher now. Let's just say we want to sell it for $100, right? That's what the market is saying they will buy it for. The, the retail price back in the 90s was $29.99, but it's not being printed anymore. Therefore, because the supply is low, right? The demand is higher because they're not making any more, right? So it makes it a collectible. Now, what Amazon tries to do, they try to use their technology, right? And say, hey, I don't want any price gouging, right? Because during the pandemic, right? When all that was going on, you know, with toilet tissue, all of these essentials, like that was a major thing on Amazon. I mean, they were sending us messages left and right if you were on Amazon back in 2020. So that was a big thing. The customers were complaining, this, that, and the other. Amazon was sending all the sellers messages, well, at least me, um, that, hey, you can't list at this price, you can't do this. So they really changed their software a lot for this, uh, for pricing on the platform. And that, they, they never changed it. So that, again, hopefully that gave you guys a deep, um, in-depth, reasoning or understanding of that listing price so again what i recommend i say all of that to say this if you want to sell a product always have your listing price two to three times over what you want to sell it for because if it's close or your if your listing price is under what you want to sell it for amazon collects that data and then they almost put like a limit we need to do a full video on that they'll kind of limit what you can list that product for. And if you list it over that limit, then they'll make it, um, they'll change it to inactive and then you'll have to go in and reprice or you can list this collectible. But that's a whole nother video, okay? All right, so now under that is the condition type. We know the condition types on Amazon. It's new, it's like new, very good, good and acceptable, right? Those are your five types, unless you go into the collectible category. And then in collectible, you don't have new, but in collectible, you do have like new, very good, good, and acceptable. Okay. From there, we almost home, y'all. They want to know our fulfillment channel. Okay. So you would either say, click, yes, I will ship this item myself, which is, y'all know it, Merchant Fulfill. That's where we're storing it. And then we're storing the items or our inventory ourselves. We'll get that that sweet email. Congratulations. Uh, this listing sold, this, that, and the other. You have, you know, 48 hours or whatever you have your account on set on the handling time to ship out this product. Okay. Now, if you're doing FBA or fulfillment by Amazon. You will select this second option here if you guys can see my cursor moving. Uh, Amazon will ship and provide customer service. Okay. Now, if you select the first option, Merchant Fulfill, boom. Soon as you go down to the bottom of this page and click submit, give it a minute or two, your inventory is already online. Congratulations. Boom. You're in the game. You're ready to get sales. But, okay. If you select where, where it's already selected, uh, Amazon will ship and provide customer service. You do have a few other steps that you're going to walk through. From there, it's going to take you to, um, and I can't remember the name of the page. It's like a create a shipment page. From there, you would just um, tell the size, the amount of products that you're going to have in each box, how many boxes you're going to have. And we can do a video on that too. After you do all of that, you're going to put labels over that UPC code, right? That barcode. And then once you put in the labels, uh, you put in the weight, uh, they're going to give you, if you choose to ship through UPS, they're going to give you two labels, right? Two labels to put on the outside of the box. We'll break down and do a video on that. 
boom, get your UPS uh, male or women woman carrier to come pick it up from your house, and boom, you in the game, right? Give it. Um, mine usually gets there in, I don't know, like 24 hours or less, right? Uh, Amazon Fulfillment Center isn't too far from where I live, um, but yours may be a couple of days. Then after that, give it anywhere from a week to two weeks for it to be live, depending on the time of the year. I always tell people in Q4, and Q4 is just the fourth quarter. That's the last three months of the year. Amazon, as far as processing inventory, is super slow. So definitely that time can vary depending on the time of the year. Okay. All right. So once you do that, that's how you list. Now, once you list in Merchant Fulfill, it's going to show up like this. And I know it may be a little bit blurry. I know my eyesight isn't the best. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, don't worry about in detail what it says, but this is inside of your account. So once you list that product under manage inventory inside your seller central account, you should see this page. Uh, if we listed it merchant fulfill, if you guys see my mouse, my cursor, the status would change to active. Okay. Now, if we listed FBA, it would still be inactive, okay? It would still be inactive. Why would it be inactive? It's because we hadn't shipped it out. We hadn't created our shipment yet. Once Amazon receives it um, and it's in their uh, system, it would then change to active, and this available number here will change to one, okay? Now, I wanted to give you guys a bonus. What if you want to list a product that's not in Amazon's inventory or not in their catalog. What does that mean? That means you created a new product. You're doing private label and you, you uh, tailored this new product. How do you put it on Amazon? A lot of people, I, I answer those questions a lot in consultations. How would you put it in? So again, we're going to go to that same page. We're going to go to add product. Remember that first page, let me slide back, was here, okay? Inside of your seller central, right, you click on inventory or hover over inventory. Remember, it's going to be in what I call that hamburger menu. That's that those three horizontal bars on the left-hand side of your mobile or your desktop or laptop. Then you're going to go to uh, add product, okay? Inventory, then add, add product then it should take you back to this page. Now, we don't have a UPC because our product, um, well, you could have one, but they're not going to be able to find it in the catalog, okay? So you need to click down up under it where it says, I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon, okay? I'm adding a product that's not sold on Amazon. So you would click there and it should take you to this page, right? You know, a lot of people make it seem hard, but it is definitely not hard. All right. From here, they just want to know what category your product is in. Right. So if you had um, a baby toy, make sure you put on baby products or if it's a different book you created or whatever it is, just pick the category from here. This is pretty um, self-explanatory. All right. The next page here is your vital info. So basically, this is the information you're giving Amazon about your specific product, okay? So if it has variations, what's a variation? So if you're in clothes, it would be like, oh, if you had a red one, a blue one, or a green one, or a variation could be a different size. If it's shoes, or if it's a, a shirt, it could be a large, an extra large, a 2X, okay? So that is a variation. Does your product have variation? You're going to put in your product ID. You would get a universal product code for your specific product that you created. Of course, you should have a name for it, your brand, and your manufacturer, right? You, the Amazon needs all of that information. Once you put all of that in, you should be good to go. So usually when I create a listing, you also, of course, you're going to also add in some of these other uh, tabs. I think it's under images and description. Images, of course, you want to put some nice photos up, right? The photos, if you're creating a product, they need to be crisp. 
and all Amazon photos needs to have a white background. Um, the description, of course, you need to make sure it's catchy. Use um, some great copy to really get your words because people do read those descriptions, keywords. So all of these tabs, you would have to go through and fill out the proper information for each of those tabs. But once you do that, it's about 24 to maybe 36 hours. They'll let you know whether you're approved. Um, your listing has been approved. And don't worry if it didn't get approved the first time. See what they're saying wrong. What they are saying is wrong with it. Go back to the drawing board and say, okay, boom, I'm going to change this. I'm going to say it this kind of way on the next time. And man, you're in the game. Okay. You're in the game, but that's the process. So I showed you guys both how to list the product that's already in Amazon's catalog. And I showed you how to create a brand new listing or create a listing for a product that's not in Amazon's catalog. So you guys have absolutely no excuses to start getting busy. You know how to list. Um, through the valuable videos I've dropped uh, previously um, on this channel over the last, what, year? I think I've been on YouTube talking about Amazon a little over a year and a half. Hey, I'm giving you step by step. I And again, if you guys have any questions or concerns, definitely drop them in the chat. I'll be sure to answer them. Answer them. Um, let me go back to my brother's question here. Life as an entrepreneur says, what is the repricer? What software? So a repricer is a definitely a, a essential item, right? But when you're first getting in the game, I do not recommend you jumping on a repricer until you're not able, until you're unable to manually go through your listing. So what does that look like? You, for most people that I speak with, it's about anywhere from 100 to 200 products in your inventory where it's just too much to keep repricing to stay competitive with the market, right? You want to, because in the end, at least for me and in our community, I advise everybody to uh, buy their time back, right? So Amazon is cool. Amazon is great, but the ultimate goal, it's just a vehicle for me, right? So whether it's real estate, whether it's um, the stock market, whether it's Amazon, it is only a vehicle to help me buy my time back because time, no matter how much money I make, it is my most valuable asset, okay? So what am I saying with that, right? What are you, what are you even talking about, Travis? Are you getting a repricer is going to help you buy more of your time back because you don't have to manually go in on your phone and adjust and make sure you're competitive in the market. That software is going to reprice to keep you competitive. So you want to always be on the edge of that next sale. Why is that? Because if we're not selling, we're not making any money, right? And the way that Amazon has FBA set up, if you're not selling inventory, you're going to be in trouble, right? It's going to be more, more fees, more long-term storage fees. So repricers help us position ourselves to be that next sale so that we can keep our churn rate, our turnover rate going to bring more cash flow into the business so that we can reinvest into new inventory and, and keep that money um, to scale up to the next level. So as far as repricer, I use inform.co. Um, just shoot me a message if you want a free trial with that. I'll definitely be able to... Um, hook you up, or you can go straight to the website, either or. Um, a couple other price, um, inform.co is a little bit on the pricier side. Um, I, I am a firm believer in you do get what you pay for. Um, another popular one that a lot of people talk about is Be Cool, B-Q-O-O-L. I don't use that one, but I've heard good things about, about it. With it using it, to me, it sounds very similar to inform.co where they use AI or artificial intelligence to um, price in the market, okay? And then another cheaper option would be reprice it. Reprice it. I think it's only nine, maybe $14 a month. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles or reprice as frequently as the other two. But I mean, some people still use it, especially in the media category. And they, you know, say they get pretty good sales. Um, also, 
if you don't want to invest and get the repricing yet, if you're on the professional seller's plan, Amazon does have a, a free repricer, right? And I think it's called Amazon repricing tool. Um, it's definitely not the greatest, but I would say, you know, something is better than nothing if you don't uh, want to manually reprice every day. So I hope my brother life as an entrepreneur, he's always here. Shout out to you that that answered your question. Guys, if you have any other questions, uh, just let me know whether you're checking in live uh, or you're watching the replay. I'm going to keep coming back. Um, if I can again today, I'll come back again for a third video today, just dropping some more game. So if you haven't already and you want to see something, make sure um, to shoot me a DM. If you hadn't already, go follow your boy on Instagram at Travis underscore GWV. Just shoot me a DM, say, Trav, you know, uh, I would like to see a video you talking about this. Oh, you're welcome, man. He said he was going to ask about the, yes, sir. So hopefully that covered that for you. You're, you're welcome. Yes, sir. So if you guys want to see a specific topic that you want me to break down, hey, let me know, man. Let me know because I don't want to do these videos, right, if they're not valuable. I'm not here to waste your time. You know, I don't want to waste my time. So if it's not helping, I don't want to do these videos, okay? All right, so y'all, I'm going to sign off. If you guys want to connect with me, again, the link to mostly everything that I talk about in this channel um, will be in the description of this video. And hey, if y'all got some more topics, I'll check my DMs um, and we'll come back again tonight. Love y'all. Be blessed. See you on the next one.